Good morning and welcome to worship with New Life Metropolitan Community Church on this second Sunday of Advent. I invite you to join us for our gathering call. You'll respond in the bold and Chris will lead us in the Spanish. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. A nosotros nos es dado un hijo. And the government shall be on his shoulder and his name shall be called. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Hacer lo que conduce a la paz y a la edificación mutua. If possible, so far as it depends on each of us. Let us live peacefully with all. Vivamos en paz con todos. May God bless this reading and the hearing of the Holy Scriptures as we sing together. <coughs> Merciful God, creator of us all, in this moment as we gather in this space and place, we ask that your spirit find each of us, no matter all the craziness of the world, no matter how hectic our morning may have already been, no matter what's on our mind, may your spirit calm us and give us peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Take just a moment and find somebody beside of you and say good morning. If you're joining us by live stream or later today or whenever in the week, we're delighted to have you joining us for worship as well. You may be seated. That was, that was not a, qui a quick wife and wife kiss. That, that was, was turning the microphone me. on, yes. <laughs> not used to that kind of quick action. <clears throat> How are y'all today? Good, welcome, welcome. Glad you enjoyed your neighbor. I mean, said welcome to your neighbor. 
hang on. <laughs> Today, lunch is going to be at Uno's, so it's good pizza day. Um, last time we went to Uno's, I got stuck here in the rain. So it's going to rain again, so it's a good day to go to Uno's, okay. <laughs> um, coming up December 13th, that's Wednesday, oh my goodness, December is flying by. So on Wednesdays through Advent, we are having our discovery and conversation with the theme of how does a weary world rejoice? So this is Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Yes, Reverend Mark. <laughs> Just wanted to let you know you don't have to have attended any of the previous sessions to be part of this. We had good discussion both on site and at Zoom. Uh, I'll send out another email later tonight or tomorrow with the link again if you want to join us by Zoom. And also the scripture and a couple of things to be thinking about before we get to that session on Wednesday. Thank you. You're welcome. Hmm. Clearing that up. On Saturday, we are having our Christmas extravaganza that's going to be here at the building at 7 p.m. in person. <laughs> and I've looked up at the sign-up sheet, and <laughs> it's going to be some fun time, okay? I think we have, how many did we say? 15. 15 people signed up. 15 acts signed up. We don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be 15 different acts. Okay. Yes. Not AXE. ACTS. Acts. Performances. 15 separate performances. If you would like to sign up, there's still time. And also, you can bring cookies. We like cookies. Or, or what? Cookies for afterwards. Do they have to be after? Okay. <laughs> Cookies for after are uh, some other Christmas treat. I like little Debbie Christmas trees. Um, coming up on the 24th, we will be having our Christmas, uh, we will be having service as usual here at 1045 on Facebook Live and in person. And then Christmas Eve, we'll be having our candlelight service here at 11 p.m. We do have, starting out the new year, our group support group, our first meeting will be January 2nd, that is the first Tuesday of the month here in person. If you'd like more information, please see Calvin or Jeannie. You can also email griefandloss at newlifemcc.net. And for our winter fun weekend in West Virginia, I do hear that Blackwater Falls Lodge is currently booked up, but don't let that dissuade you. Call, because depending on the snow results, they might have cancellations. And there are other places around the area that you can check into. There's another resort, Canaan Resort, I think, that we go to. Canaan. I'm sorry, I don't speak West Virginian all the time. <laughs> so, Canaan <laughs> Resort, and that's where we go to do some snow tubing. So, we will be trans transporting back and forth between resorts. So come out, join the fun. Don't let Blackwaters fall, say, oh, we're booked up. No, keep calling. Always call. Be the squeaky wheel. All right, I am done for today. Come on, Mark. Come on up here. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> they do not have a cancellation list, so you just need to keep calling back uh, If for those of you who might be interested in going. I've been trying to get my form back. From, it's been a while since I've been on skis. Well. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. Last Sunday, and we have already this morning lit one of the candles of the Advent wreath, the candle of hope from last week. And so today we light the second candle. The second candle and the fourth candle can sometimes be interchanged. Sometimes it's love, sometimes it's peace. We're choosing to do peace. Now, some denominational traditions, I happen to see this on Facebook, that are making the suggestion of leaving the peace candle unlit because of all the conflict and trouble in the world. And yet, there has always been trouble in the world. And it's important for us, no matter how serious and dangerous and violent the world is, for us to still hold out the light of hope that God's love and reconciliation can be in all people. So we will continue to light that candle during this Advent season. In just a moment, I'm going to ask someone to come forward and light that candle. 
Uh, and as we sing what you see printed in the bulletin, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. I ask for a volunteer. Alan? getting a text from someone trying to connect with us by live stream this morning it's been going in and out some of us have been going in and out for some of you have been going in and out for a number of years and have finally come out hopefully we will be in and out in a good way on the live stream later uh, and we'll also are recording it so if someone's texting you let them know we'll be putting that up later online or it'll be on YouTube for sure would you take a moment and rise as you're able, and let's do the scripture together. Unfortunately, Jeff is home sick with a cold today, and so we always miss him, but we're glad to have everyone uh, who's back in the AV, and it's not their fault we're not connecting. It seems to be a technical issue that's beyond our control. And again, thank you to everyone who helped to make our AV um, center look very nice back there with the trim. I'm not going to ask you to read all of this with me, but at one point when we get through this passage in Isaiah, I'll ask you to join me. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and respectful fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the respectful fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge for the poor and decide with equity for the oppressed of the earth. He shall stri strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. Now join me with this part. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion will feed together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt nor destroy all on my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And now this passage from Matthew that is so familiar from the Beatitudes. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Look around to someone beside of you and say, you are a child of God. Now be a peacemaker. You may be seated as we sing together. Bye. 
Remember what we did last week, for those of you who are here? We sang part of O Holy Night, but I stopped you because you wanted so much to go into that fall on your knee. Oh, I, I gave up a career to come back to ministry. That, yes, 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 yes. So, Scott, are you ready for this again? All right, so we're going to sing. And the reason, because it says, A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices. And that's the theme of our Wednesday evening discussion, our discovery and discussion and conversation that we're doing. How do we find joy to rejoice in a weary world? Because we are, and one of the things we talked about on Wednesday night was all the different ways that we find joy, even in those small things, and all the things that make us weary, too. And the list, sort of, how does it weigh out sometimes? Sometimes it goes one way, sometimes it goes another. And so just as a way of sort of centering us, knowing that in this, when you watch the news, I get weary from that. There are all kinds of things that get us weary, whether it's relationships or jobs or finances or the way the world is or our health or worry about somebody else's health. Those things begin to take a toll on us. So what are we going to do? We're going to sing, but we're going to stop before we get to fall on your knees. There will be consequences today for anybody who, you know, takes that temptation and wants to jump ahead. All right. Are you ready? Scott, are we ready? All right, here we go. Oh, holy night. Oh, holy night. <laughs> Mike Carter, would you come front and center, please? <laughs> Did you do that on purpose? For me. You wanted to be on camera, I didn't you? I don't do that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put him to work since he did that. This will show you what's going to happen in just a moment. I'm making him, gonna, I'm not making him, but I asked him if he'd lead our prayer. Now, and that wasn't planned. Sometimes it's planned spontaneity, but Michael yes. do good for that. Today we hold all kinds of things. And yes, as we get forward and move forward, we want so much for the world to just feel what we're feeling. And yet sometimes it is so hard. We hold so much in both hands. We hold all of the folks who are finding life tough right now in our prayers. And we have a lot. I've, I've stopped saying sick and afflicted because I'm trying to figure out who's sick and who's afflicted. But we're, we're all sometimes facing some kind of health challenges or we know someone who is. And I encourage you, if you've got praises or prayers, to write them in the prayer book and our prayer and intercessory group. We'll continue. And Tony, thank you for continuing to list those in our prayer group on Facebook. It doesn't go out to the public, but into those. If you'd like to be part of that, let me or Tony know. We'll add you to that Facebook group so you can hold those in your prayers as well. And certainly across the world, there are many things. And before Mike leads us in a prayer, I want to just use this as sort of a lead up to that prayer. This was the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying to self that we are born to eternal life. The prayer by St. Francis. Mike, would you put words to our prayers today? Thank you. Heavenly Pair, we give you thanks. We give you honor and glory as always. In lifting you up in everything that we do, we give you thanks that we are able to do that. 
and we are able to show that we love one another, even in the times that are difficult and even in this time that we should love each other. And because of your, your birth and your death, that we are here. Heavenly Parent, we want to bring forth to you all the things in our hearts, whether it's heavy or whether it's light. Heavenly Parent, we ask that you continue to guide us and to love one another, to not judge one another, but to be there for one another. Heavenly Parent, in these things, we give you praise and we give you glory. Amen. <laughs> Today, as we receive our offering, let us think of the offerings that God has given to us. Whether it's peace of mind or peace of soul or a kick on the backside every once in a while to sort of, and I don't believe God is up there with a lightning bolt ready to zap us every time that we, we sort of get out of line or maybe don't get it sometimes. It takes a while. God is so patient with us, and yet we're not only impatient with God sometimes, I think we're impatient with each other. But I want you to look to somebody beside of you and say, thank you. I am patient with you. Now, I know that brought some chuckles to some of you, and I'm not talking about Chuckles the Clown. Sometimes, as we get into this season, we forget that we need to look around and just say thank you. Thank you to God and to each other, and to realize that as we're going into this new year, that God continues to give us an opportunity to make a difference in someone's life, as so many have in us. I want you to think right now of three people who are past, who have made a difference in your life. And now I want you to think of three people who are living who have made a difference in your life. And before the end of the day, call them, text them, email, whatever, and say thank you. Gracious and merciful God, we give thanks that you are always oh, in our lives, even in our souls when we have felt dead and you have brought us back to life in ways that help us to experience joy and hope and love and peace even when we thought it wasn't possible. And in this moment, as we give thanks, we also ask that you put that spark in our soul with your spirit touching our spirit in a way that we can continue to be committed individually and collectively together to make a difference inside of this space, but also outside of this space in the world. May we be lights, even as these candles will be extinguished now, even on Christmas Eve, but knowing it is the spirit of love and hope and peace and joy that we can't hold on our own, that it takes all of us together and as it overflows in our lives, may somebody else's life be touched. We thank you and we praise you and all God's people said, amen. I invite you to give as God's spirit leads you to give. You put something in the offering place. I say this every week. We don't pass them, but you can get up and put something in at any time. Drop something in the mail to us or put it in the mailbox of the church or you can go to our website, newlifefcc.net and click on the giving tab and give that way. But thank you for who you are and for all your compassion and generosity. May God's spirit lead us to give. Do I see what you see? Way up in the sky, little land. Do you see what I see? A star, a star, dancing in the night with a tail as big as a pie. With a tail as big as a pie. Said a little lamb to the shepherd boy. Do I hear what you hear? Do I hear what you hear? Bringing through the sky, shepherd boy. Do you hear what I hear? Hear what I hear? A song, a song. I know what you know, I know what you know, in your palace warm as it be. Do you know what I know, you know what I know, a child, a child, shivers in the cold, let us bring him silver and gold, oh let us bring him silver and gold. Send the king to the people everywhere, may I hear what you say, may I hear what you say, as we bring the things everywhere. Let us hear each other, let us hear each other, the child, the child, sleeping in the night, bring us goodness and light, we will bring us goodness and light.
you would, please rise and join us in singing the doxology. Praise God, among all blessings low. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God, above ye heavenly hosts. Praise the angels, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Most gracious God, we do and offer our thanksgiving. We ask for more peace, God. God, this allows us to use these gifts to give you glory in everything that we do. Amen. You may be seated. Special thanks to um, the folks who showed up uh, this past week to put the outside wreath up. I think I misspoke last week when I said it took five or six gay men, and it was five or six gay men last year, and Sandra. I apologize to Sandra <laughs> from, from missing you. For, you yes, you were, you were there last year. You weren't there this year, but you were last year. Uh, it was five gay men who did it, uh, so yes. Uh, and we'll have other things going up after the wind gets over this afternoon. We'll go to the sparkly trees will go out later today. The passage of Scripture that is perhaps one of the most familiar about peace is that passage from Philippians, Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And if you know this, say it with me. And the peace of God, which surpasses or goes beyond all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Well, if it goes beyond any understanding, we're done. Would you rise with an addiction? Oh, some of you are so eager today. That just added a good 20 minutes to the sermon. So perhaps the most, next most common passage of Scripture is one that we read also, that from the Beatitudes. Now, do you say, the real question is, do you say blessed are blessed. How many of you grew up in blessed? Blessed, yeah. Oh, oh excuse me, Rick. Okay, well, we'll have you pray next week. So, blessed are the peacemakers. For what? They shall be called the children of God. But what does it mean to be a peacemaker? What does it mean? When we think about everything, I, I gotta be honest, it makes me think, think about peacemaker. Have any of you seen the movie with um, Sandra Bullock and Be Still My Heart, Ryan Reynolds, and, and Betty White, The Proposal? where Sandra Bullock is a Canadian and she's about to be deported because of her immigration status. And so they come up with this scheme that she's going to marry Ryan Reynolds. And they go back to visit his parents way up in Alaska somewhere, probably up your neck of the woods up there. And Betty White is the doting grandmother. And so they're so excited and they're very progressive. They, the, the parents and the grandmother, you know, they let them, they're not married, they let them sleep in the same bed and all this good stuff. And they're just having so much fun. They're excited that their son finally has somebody. They, we all know he was gay anyway. And, and so grandma comes in with this blanket and she says, I want you all to have this blanket and let you need to snuggle up. It's called the baby maker. <laughs> I would that peacemaking was as easy as throwing a blanket on someone. I would wish that we could just throw the blanket like the Harry Potter or like the invisibility cloak over individuals or groups of people or parts of the world, and suddenly there would be peace. It would seem like it would be so much easier if that were to be the case because it feels like that we have forgotten that Old Testament line that says we are called to always remember that we are a community of peoples. And that means that peoples may be different from what you and I think, what you and I look like, what you and I do, and what you and I may even by their say it believe. Now through the years we have tried, others have tried our hands at peace, shalom, peace be with you, salam, and I may be pronouncing the Arabic incorrectly. Assalamu alaikum. This is peace be on you. We talk about passing the peace lots of times in our churches and places of faith. Any of us have lost our peace of mind? Or maybe you want to give me a, not a P-E-A-C-E piece of your mind, but a P-I-E-C-E -E of your mind. I want a piece of you when you get mad at somebody. Or I want a piece of that. And I'm not even going there with that one. My Aunt Betty, who is 90-some years old, said to my daughter Jordan when she was dating Brock, and of course we do affectionately call him cauliflower. I could call him broccoli. And Aunt Betty says in a very nice, naive kind of, not so naive kind of way, oh, Jordan, everybody likes a little piece of broccoli once in a while. <laughs> If you are Medea, a peace is what? A gun, yes. It's a peacekeeper in her mind. There is the peace pole that many congregations of faith and not just ours but others gather around. It has all four parts of the pole as reminders of peace. Some of you have smoked a peace pipe. And I'm going to ask what you've put in yours and what you have been. And how many times have we cried out, can I just get a little bit of peace and quiet in this place? The symbols of peace are the dove. I love the doves. There were five of those doves. And there's a difference between a dove and a pigeon. When I was at MCC Washington, we used to have this, the top third of the sanctuary is blast. And there's this huge oak tree out. And the fire would sing and the pigeons of the Holy Spirit would fly out of that tree. But a dove's a little bit different than a pigeon. To think of a dove, and the, the turtle dove, in a way, is a symbol of peace. The olive branch is a symbol of peace. The peace sign, some of you are old enough to remember the 60s. I was born in the 60s. Susan, you're doing what? You're, you're, peace, peace. You know that peace symbol? Do you know where it originated? It wasn't out of the anti-war movement of the 60s. It wasn't an anti-war thing, in a way, but it was in the late 50s in England. It was the sign and symbol for nuclear disarmament in Great Britain. And believe it or not, guess what else has been a symbol of peace? In Italy, in the year I was born, I won't tell you what that year was. Thank you. <laughs> this is definitely the bad side today. Would you all like to rectify yourself and say... I'll just tell you, I was born in 19, whatever. Before we were using it in our community, of course, the rainbow has not just been ours, but it was the rainbow flag in Italy that was a symbol of peace. Pace is the Italian word, I think, for peace. Roman, it was the Roman pace of peace, the Roman roads. Of course, even in that oppressed time, they talked about the Roman peace because all the warring tribes knew they better back. Not, not, the Roman was truly the peacekeeper in that day. In the old westerns, it was what? You better make peace with your maker. There was the Peace Corps. And then when we did pass, sometimes we say rest in or 
power. Oftentimes that is a reminder that that person has continued, or maybe the injustice that was there and the work to bring about justice would bring change in the world toward peace, or that person's life, recognizing that person had made a difference in life and in death and in memory to inspire all of us. Minnie, this morning, Minnie was able to join us this morning, but she was on the Zoom for our care team this morning, and at the end, she, I asked her to pray, and she said, peace out. <laughs> and then, James, there's your favorite saying of love, peace, and hair grease, for those of us who have hair. So let's dig a little bit deeper. What does it mean to be a presence for peace? To be a peacemaker, to be a peacekeeper, to be a peace builder. The scripture today reminds us of a painting that was done by a Quaker artist back in the early 1800s. It got to be known as the Peaceable Kingdom because these, all these different creatures and animals were all together there. We think about the Peaceable Kingdom, and yet does that sometimes mean keeping the peace? Does it mean compromise? Does it mean that we're going to settle? Does it mean that we're going to keep quiet? To just keep the peace? How many of us have sort of done that in our lives with, with family members that we have held our tongue because we knew if we said something, oh, there was going to be held back. Sometimes we may feel like we're walking on eggshells trying to keep the peace. And we're nurtured at weddings, too, because not so much in, in our tradition, but in other traditions, how many times was it, you know, there was the old trust and obey. I threw that one out the window a long time ago. And, but there was that speak now or forever hold your peace for anybody. That would, why would we be so crazy to ask that question, knowing the slew of boyfriends and girlfriends that some of you have leading up to that marriage? I'm not sure I want to put myself out there like that. It's discernment, isn't it, that's important. To know when to hold our tongue, when to speak up or not. What's that country and western song? Maybe it's not country and western. No, we got to know when to hold them. You know when to fall. Oh, y'all into the casino. Until the dealing is done. Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight for you. Hold your peace and rest. And so as we ask for discernment, I go back to that question, are you a peacemaker? Are you a peacekeeper? Are you a peace builder? Or in this side of the room, are you disturbing the peace? <laughs> Still not sure. Well, let's think about being a peacekeeper for a moment. My mind goes to being a UN peacekeeper in the middle of a hot zone, in the middle of two people who are angry at each other. I guess from the times I felt like I was a peacekeeper, we're trying to part this lesbian couple in my office. We're going at each other. That was a scary place to be. I'm going to go back there. A peacekeeper is to prevent or to stop those who might disturb the peace to make sure that people behave. You know what the problem is, is that we may have different perceptions of what good behavior is and is not. Or we may be tempted to take sides. Sometimes all you can do is keep the people apart. Remember that story of Abraham and his nephew Lot? And no, have no sense to say, let's not fight over this. Whenever you go here, one day Abraham was being gracious and let Lot choose the most well-watered area, which, you know, let down Sodom more, which is not, I will say this, not about the LGBT community or the things that happened there. It was about rape and abuse of human beings. Let's make sure people still know that. So let's move from being a peacekeeper as you think about what you are or maybe all that you are or want to be to being a peacemaker. We can pray for world peace, but to be a peacemaker, I think, takes more than our thoughts and prayers. It requires us to engage. It requires us maybe to wade in the water. Maybe we would rather stay home and stick our head in the sand. It requires us to try to find or to help to try to find a solution. And the only way we can do that is not to be a Monday morning quarterback, but to be in the middle of what's going on. And that's not always easy, but the place I want to be. If I hear anything, I'm going to say, man, that It requires to be a peacemaker. It requires us to care enough to get involved. Think about that. I don't know about you, but that sort of comes back on me. I got to move my toes back. I step on my own toes. But sometimes I just do not be involved. And in today's world, it's, we, we're hesitant because we don't know what's on the other end. It's like the, the um, he just blew the bear in the jungle movie. He had a hold of the, of the tiger's tail. Shere Khan the tiger. And he says, help, help, somebody help me. And he said, I go, he said, no, that's my teeth. We're afraid of that other end. That's my teeth. The author of the book James put it this way. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Now, I think there's a danger in being a peacekeeper and a peacemaker that we get so involved, or we start to take side, or we just want to have a little mischief and stir things up. Would any of you be in that category that you are an instigator or have been an instigator? I'm going to give you an example of my mom and dad. They've been married for 64 years. I was born after year 30. And so, as far as I know, I know everybody's different. We don't always know our parents, right? I mean, we may be surprised to learn things about our parents after they pass. But as far as I know, best I can tell, my mom and dad are still as much in love as they've ever been. And in those 64 years, and I was born about three years into that, I guess. Thank you, you don't have to tell the year. And so anyway, what I'm trying to tell, let me come tell you all over here. What I'm trying to tell is as best I can tell, they never cheated on me. They've been faithful to each other. Because they're as much in love today as they were all down at their age. They have to my mom, my dad, not in bad ways, but in things, you know, that you just do with families. But before they got married, it seemed my dad had strange girlfriends. All it takes, I proved it again this week on the phone, because back during the pandemic, I started calling my parents every night. And my mom's sister, who lives next door, I and she's 86, I'm dead at 83. And so we continue that tradition. We're very few, about bingo nights, so back in the only time I don't call them because we're busy, I'm not getting home too late. But I called to check in. So this past week, I wanted to test my theory before I threw them under the bus today. And so I said something to mom, and I said um, something was about how good dad is to mom. And I said, Yeah, was that always the case? What about that time you we were in the hospital? And mom was like in her teens, and they were dating, dating through high school. Dad was going to see you in the hospital and brought you something and had at least one girl car outside waiting when they got through. That's all it takes. There's several instances like that. All it takes is that. And boy, my mom was 64, I'm for seven years before. My mom's still, still fresh my mom. And my dad, I can just hear it. I know if I was going to be giving me looking at him, shut up, Mark. You know, we, we all like to instigate sometimes, don't we? Let's be honest with that. We do. So let's get beyond instigating part and peacekeeping and the peacemaker. Let's talk about being a peace builder, which may even require more of us than being a peacemaker. It may mean an idea and an eye for a heart for the longer term consequences, or the longer term commitment to the longer outcome of things. A peace, P-I-E-C-E, -E, by P-I-E-C-E, -E, person by person, individually changing hearts and minds, as that phrase often gets used in work for justice. The Apostle Paul says, so then we pursue the things which make for peace and building up one another. It's one thing to want people to warring factions to stop fighting. It's another thing to want to build up and have a relationship there that's in a good, very good way. I would say it requires a commitment to first listen. We heard this in St. Francis' prayer. To seek to understand before trying to be understood. It requires empathy. It requires, no, this is a hard one for us. To be non judgmental. When was the time you inadvertently criticize somebody else in a judgmental kind of way? Some of you have breakfast this morning, I'm sure. Non preconceived opinions, perceptions, and assumptions. It requires us to let go of that. From a spiritual standpoint, someone said that we need to have three things. And you know, I am not a three point creature and I resist that with everything that I am. But someone said there were three things I'm going to have four points because you don't like
The Apostle Paul said, therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We've already talked about the peace of God that goes beyond understanding. It's hard for us to comprehend that peace that God brings into our lives. And to have peace with others, Paul said, if it's possible, as far as it depends on you, do what? Live at peace with everyone. To do that takes what? Forgiveness? It takes understanding? It takes compassion in a whole lot of ways. To find peace with ourselves, what does that require? Someone wrote this, seeking peace with others actually helps me identify my own fears and weaknesses. Once I see these obstacles, I can take responsibility to move towards peace on my end of things. I can work to remember it's not my responsibility to handle anyone else's obstacles. Most of the time, we're more than happy to help somebody else. What we see their challenges, don't talk about mine. Don't talk about mine. There's an article I encourage you to look it up. It's under the heading of the Federation for World Peace and Love and the Interface Peace Building Initiative. And this person who is the coordinator for the Interface Peace Building Initiative said that it is the golden rule that makes the difference in our efforts across the world and individually. He said the golden rule is not just more ideal for relationships between people, but also for relationships among nations, cultures, races, sexes, economies, and religions. Clearly, the golden rule has capacity to be the ethical cornerstone in developing a global ethics and work together to build a peaceful, just, and sustainable global society. We'll try to go the around. Doing to others as, yeah. Well, the Genesis man said, doing to others before others are done to you. That's usually the one sometimes that we like to live by. So if you look at all this, and I don't like to protect anything, but I want you to go back sometimes if you, and you really want to think about peace. And just do a Google search on the word peace for the scriptures and what it means to have peace with God, to peace with ourselves. You'll find the number that Jesus said, what? My peace I give you, I leave with you, not as the world gives, but what? I do not give as the world gives, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Look at what happened after the resurrection when Jesus showed up and they were locked behind closed doors. The first thing that Jesus said to them was what? Oh, I'm really thinking, he said, what is going on? That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, peace be with you. They were locked behind closed doors. I think that's the case maybe over looking at Jesus. Now, Jesus really goes to that point in the spirit, he can do anything. I think that fourthly, it may say to us that when we're behind a locked door, when we're behind a situation that's challenging so much that we feel like we can't do with it, we're locked away, or we can't get through, that God's peace is still going to come through. He says it again, but he's getting ready to send them out. My peace, I leave with you. It wasn't always easy, but we think of Jesus being, I know Joey quoted some crazy preacher who one day said that Jesus didn't say very, very, I smashed my thumb in the carpenter shop. Jesus said probably what we all said. I like to think that Jesus wasn't just swallowing everything so easy in a way that everything goes down without hiccup. Because actually, if we think about it, Jesus said, I didn't come to them in peace. There will be times when families will be torn apart, when you will not be received in a good way. I think in Jesus' mind, Jesus knew that the kind of peace, the kind of love, and we know this well in our community, as some of us still continue to struggle and to want to be accepted, to be included by family members. Some of us even still rejected by family members. And so in the middle of that, how do we claim peace in a way that brings glory to God? And sometimes it's hard because, you know, sometimes I've got something against somebody else, then I need to let go. Sometimes it's hard for us to just let go. You know, we're seeing ones that frozen. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. You want to just like fall on me. Sometimes you just want to sing it out, don't you? Let it go. You can never say let it go. I didn't say let him go or her go, so I don't hear anybody saying relationships up. I do that. But the scripture also says in a different way that if you know that somebody has something against you, Go to them and try to make it right. Now, that was a hard one. Because most of us say, I don't care what you think. It doesn't impact me at all. The scripture says we have a responsibility to do what we can. We may not be able to the situation, but have we put everything we possibly can into trying to understand, trying to communicate. Talk about peace and love. I used to say that the main issues with regard to marriage relationships and intimate relationships that were three are two, I used to say. It was, um, there would be financial issues. It would often be about that sort, sex, or communication. I've changed this now just too, because I think most of the time our issues around sex are about communication. And sometimes our issues about money are about communication. So communication is important in our effort to not only be a peacekeeper, a peacemaker, but a peace builder. Because over time, it takes building of trust. And solidarity for that. Because if we don't trust individuals, we're not going to be who we are. We're not going to be safe when this campaign we've been doing with public service announcements through WBEC that uh, target our transgender and non-binary community during T-Door and up to T-Door that we would let them know that there are resources available for suicide prevention awareness and that there's a supportive community there. When we tried to vet that 98 number, we couldn't get a guarantee that when they called that number, they were going to be shipped off to another regional operator who might be from some evangelical church or somebody that maybe didn't understand the nuances of being transgender non-binary. So it's what I said to them was we've got to be careful about that because if people don't feel safe, they're not going to come forward to tell you what's going on. I think the same thing's true in peace building is that we have to work to build trust. And I'm talking about individually, and we, and we, I don't say thank you to this congregation, but I'm saying it's like, compare all of us out here. We have bigger problems Right, then we don't do that. And there's that. And we as a family, we use that, that phrase saying, well, I'm family, sometimes family can disagree sometimes. We may not always, when we like every family, some families are dysfunctional. I'm sure so. Mine, I don't know. I don't believe that's all. They're playing. But my mom made me walk negative theory. She is. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I don't often quote our one brothers and sisters of Latter day Saints. I think it's really important. I like their principles for peace faith, forgiveness, prayer, repentance, scripture, compassion, gratitude, and hope. And all of those hit us up to finding that trust and solidarity for the long term. I hope that when I am in my 50s, that I'm going to look back and say, oh, wow, those relationships in new life, they would have been locked. I thought the family would be my 70s and 80s and 90s, or how long God lives us, let us live together. Because you know, I believe that you're here for one service, whether you're here for two or two months or six months or six years, our lifetime long comes in here. God has a lot of reasons for that. And the peace of God that goes beyond any understanding, we may look back and think, wow, what could I be thinking? Or wow, how could I not seeing that? That often in my case, I see it later, of how important that people are in our lives. And so I say to you, you are important to me. I love you. Now I want you to turn around and say to somebody, you're important to me. You're important to me. And I love you. And may the peace of God that goes beyond all understanding. Guard our hearts and our minds, and that heart is emotion, our mind is our intellect. Sometimes you hear me say this about healing. Sometimes we pray for healing, thinking only physical. But it's the wholeness of who we are. It's the spiritual part of who we are, the physical part of who we are, the emotional part of who we are, the intellectual part. It's our hearts and our minds together. I want to close with not just the prayer of St. Francis, St. Francis, yes, that was Francis, but the new St. Francis. Lord God of peace, hear our prayers. We have tried so many times and over so many years to resolve our conflict by our own powers and by the force of our arms. How many moments of hostility and darkness have we experienced? How much blood have we shed? How many lives have been shattered? How many hopes have been buried? And our efforts have been vain. Now, Lord, come to our aid. Grant us peace. Teach us peace. Guide us steps in the way of peace. Open our eyes and with our hearts and give us the courage to say never anymore. With war, everything is lost. It's still in our hearts the courage to take concrete steps to achieve peace. Lord God of Abraham, God of the prophets, God of love, you created us and you call us to live as brothers and sisters and however we self-identify. Give us the strength daily to be instruments of peace and enable us to see everyone who crosses our path as our brother or sister. 
make us sensitive to the plea of our citizens who entreat us to turn our weapons of war into implements of peace, our creation into confident trust, and our calling into forgiveness. Keep alive within us the flame of hope, so that with patience and perseverance we may offer dialogue and reconciliation. In this way may peace triumph at last, and may the words division, hatred, and war be banished from the heart of every man and woman and child. Lord, diffuse the violence of our tongues and our hands. Renew our hearts and our minds, so that the world, the word which always brings us together, will be brother or sister, and our way of life will always be that. Shalom, peace, salam, amen. Powerful words. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord be in you. May the peace be with you. Oh, you didn't say so sure. May the peace be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise. It is right to the Lord to give you thanks and praise. So we lift our voices to all saints and angels and proclaim your glory and iniquity. So we say, Amen. The scripture says, Mercy, my creator's fault. And we gather around the table, a table that all cross the world, those in some way, somehow, fashion, some more. There's something even totally better than they are. The table of reconciliation, the table of love, the table of peace, of hope, that lives in joy. So we come to the table of passion, the table of mercy, the table of community, the table of thanksgiving here in our space and place. Oh, as your spirit on the table of all these gifts that we hold in hands, you that live all the way in our day or later in the week. Because the Holy Spirit unites us and brings us together. The way that He fills us up, we're looking at you and with each other. In Jesus' holy and precious name, all our people said, Amen. Jesus took the table and blessed it for that this is my body and my life, which is my body, open to you, as often as you receive it, receive me. The same way you cut the salt, okay? Because I was asking me, I was sort of thinking, well, I was thinking, oh, you know, it's sort of 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 thinking, oh, you know, and we were having a house that had a rock cliff. Such a storm came up. We had to go to the bank. He said, you know, it's not going to be a practical thing. One of the things that we have is arms crushed, and the fact that we know the crackers. And on the high purpose, I'm not. I'm just looking at the purpose. The low purpose, I'm not. But he's the crackers. But in that moment, the weird cross finds us. And okay, we're still struggling to figure out. This is basically a piece of non understanding. It's a very real to believe. Then there's a doubt in our faith. We'll have to be perfect. Thank goodness, only in you. There's one thing I'm not proud of being said in the public ministry. There's one thing I cannot do that in the first person. I can't hurt anyone. I was going to say, because I'm sorry, not something. Why are you part of your journey? No, 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 I'm not going to accept that people say, hey, it's not going to be all that for sure, though. I send you to share that message. Not in a way that we have to make people believe or act, it's not going to be easy. We accept and believe as a child of God. Because the Imperial that comes to the same, among you are a child of God. You can say, you can actually raise your hand, and you're a little one. Your home page, wherever you are, let me know if you're walking online, or you do whatever you have to do with your crack, or arm crush, or whatever you have to do with your crack, or whatever you have to do with your ass, or whatever you have to do with your ass, or whatever you have to do with your ass, or whatever you have to do with your ass, or whatever you have to do with your ass, or whatever you have to do with your ass, or whatever you have to do with your ass, or whatever you have to do with your ass, or whatever you have to do with your ass, or whatever you have to do with Let's start you when you consider yourself a peacekeeper, a peacemaker, and may we all aspire to be peacekeepers. Know that you can be, because you are, child God. You can be blessed for peace. Good night, grace and mercy, salvation, my friends. Happy Thanksgiving. Like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul.